welcome to a brief SEO autopilot tutorial on it's not so much using the diagram editor I'll put a link underneath the how to use the diagram editor but some ideas so I did originally toy with the idea of creating lots of sorry if you can hear hissing in the background that's my air conditioning <laughs> the office is incredibly hot today um, that was my, um, my idea was to actually put loads of different diagrams up and explain them all but actually what happened after I'd done one or two of those I realized there were just some common themes that I was repeating in each video and that a more valuable and quicker way of getting the information across would just be to explain why you might put certain link types at certain levels within your um, setup so that's all this video is going to be and I'm going to try and keep it to under seven or eight minutes so you can get it all as quick as you can so here are the link types you've got uh, this is everything that's currently part of SEO Autopilot. We know article directories are coming. There's going to be a second lot of social bookmarking sites, high quality, .gov and then MISC. We're looking forward to seeing what those are. However, this already offers more link types than my previous favourite tool, which some of you probably know as Ultimate Demon until a couple of years ago, um, in that it's got um, authority links, which are links which are very hard to create and need custom scripts. Uh, it's got good quality edu links as well it's got pdf uploads as well which all of those i love and like um, so that's all good so let's have a little look about uh, why you might put different link types in different tiers so first of all your standard tier one link is often your web 2.0 blog now i've been asked a few times why that's the case um, i know many of you will know um, but I'll explain anyway. Web 2.0 blog has two things. First of all, most of those on the list of uh, link sites that SEO Autopilot has are very high domain authority. Their domain authority is 60 or higher and many of them are 80 or higher, which is just extremely high domain authority. Now, obviously that's not, you know, that doesn't necessarily transfer to page authority unless you give the link some love by building a tiered linking system behind them but on their own they are fantastic that's reason one but the real reason they're first tier is because they allow you to add as much content around your links as you like and that is increasingly important a naked link a link on its own on a page where you just drop a link a link directory style link or a bio link where you have 50 words about yourself and then a link at the bottom they're okay but they don't allow Google or the other search engines to really ascertain what the context is why that link is appropriate to go to your site it doesn't mention probably doesn't mention anything about the products on your site if it does it's limited to very few words what you really want to add around your first tier links is context so if you're writing about blue widgets you want to create a page on a web 2 blog a minimum of 300 words but for goodness sake as often as you can go way above that explaining blue widgets perhaps handwritten or very very well spun and readable you know if you're going to use a spinner make it damn good um, you know don't, don't over spin don't don't go for the number of variations go for the quality of the output so web 2.0 is all about um, getting content to it so you've got very high domain authority very high content next one I'm going to bring out I'm going to go down these in order is your old social bookmarking now, as you can see there, I've linked social bookmarking. I'm going to put two in here. I'm going to explain why. Okay, so social bookmarking is an interesting one, and it really covers so many different site types that it's a bit difficult to get your head round. A social bookmark, uh, your digs and things like that, and your, your plig sites and all the rest of those sort of sites, they allow quite a bit of content too. It's certainly a lot more than Twitter feed and it's certainly a lot more than your typical forum bio. You're talking about probably hundreds if not a few thousand words. The downside of some of them is that the links are transient. They don't last forever. They either scroll off the bottom of the page so you have no fixed URL you can backlink to with your tiered backlinks or they just get archived after a period of time. But some don't and you know don't think of your linking profile as here's, here's the trick here don't think of a linking profile as complete think of a linking profile as something which you will have to add to and refresh from time to time once every one two three six months depending on your competition and your market we'll come to that in another video so your social bookmarking can go here or here or you can split them into two sets and have both URL shorteners right 
URL shorteners. So obviously you probably know about your Google uh, URL shorteners and, and your various other ones, your bitlies and things like that. Well, there's a lot of them out there. Um, these should not be first tier links, in my opinion. I know some people would consider them first tier links, but URL shorteners for me are your third tier links. They are indexing links. So if you want to index hard and use something that's more appropriate than the SEO Autopilot indexer, you can use the URL shortener. Now there's nothing really wrong with having these wherever you like. You know, if you wanted these on your second or first tier, you could. You probably wouldn't get uh, spam issues. We know from experimentation that Google passes about two thirds of the normal, what we used to call PR or link juice, down through a URL shortener. So it's not as powerful as a, a straightforward URL. By all means, consider using them, but I, so I personally have them right at the back end. Right, now we come to the two that are where we have the real issue, authority links. Many times I see authority links here, and that's not so bad. And I also see the edgy links here, because these two link types are incredibly powerful for two reasons as well. The authority links are on very hard to get sites. If you don't have SEO Autopilot, you're going to really struggle to create these authority links manually. It can be done, but it is a ball ache. Likewise, the edu links, the .edu, that is a premium and all, in fact, it's a reserved um, suffix. Very, very powerful. Uh, there was an update, as I'm writing this, as I'm doing this on the 27th of June, there was an update just a couple of days ago where the uh, developers um, updated the edu links and, and, and redid the algorithms that get them created and whatnot. They're very, very powerful. However, I would struggle to put them as first tier links. I would, the authority links I would split into two. When you create a task, I would, there are two sorts of authority links. There are authority links that is just a link and there are authority links that are naked links. The ones that allow a decent link to be attached, content to be attached to the link, I would put first tier. Those that don't, I would put second tier. Now bear in mind these are for all different site types, so you, you can mix authority, you can you can actually go like this if you wanted to. As long as you didn't have exactly the same sites, you can have authority links into authority links, because you're going to have content rich authority links there, non-content rich authority links here. You can do that. I wouldn't normally advise having one link type same into the, the same link type, but these are all different platforms. There isn't there there's no platform uniformity with those. Edu links, we have a similar issue. Some are very content rich and some aren't. My temptation again would be to have some edu links there and some, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna put them there, some there. So the ones that are content rich go straight to your money site, the ones that aren't go to your first tier and their second tier sites. Wiki links, back in the day, back in 2011-12, Wiki was the new big daddy on the market. They're not anymore. Wikilinks, I would sort these by domain authority. I would put those with high domain authority in a campaign, in a in a task straight to your money site, and those with a lower domain, and I maybe do the cutoff at about 20, I'd do a relatively low cutoff, uh, because the wiki uh, domain authorities tend to be substantially lower. But anything above 20, and there are a few, put direct to the money site, anything 20 or below, um, put lower down and I put these to my web two blogs rather than to themselves. Forum profiles, these are your archetypal second tier links. Um, you may want to do, okay, you may have to do a couple of those. You may want forum profiles to be that sort of, that sort of layout. Um, you can have, again, you can sort by domain authority if you want, personally, I've, I've, I've used Zrummer quite a lot in the past. I've had it more or less since the day it was publicly released, about nine years ago now, I think. And I haven't found a great deal of success in the last three years as forum profiles as first tier links. It used to get great success. However, I still find they are brilliant second tier and indexing links. They're they are amongst the best. They're probably better than any of these. And it's just, you know, you need more forum profiles. They are superb. So consider them second tier links. Um, then you've got your PDF upload. Now PDF upload, 
as you know SEO Autopilot will create a PDF for you out of, out of some content it will basically wrap it around in a PDF wrapper and upload it to the PDF site I wouldn't do that I would uh, I'll sh there's a method which I'll show in another video of actually getting it to use a PDF that you've uploaded create a PDF even if it's using content for your own website and upload that upload a good PDF this is one of the few sites as well although um, these are uploaded to the sites it's, I often go into the PDF sites afterwards log in obviously SEO autopilot will give you username and password so you can log in and there are fields where you can add some real value to the profiles you've created for the PDF upload on these PDF upload sites where you can add other good links and bios and things like that to it and in that case PDFs are first tier link so you have all of these are potential first tier links but some of them are special case I'll run through the special case again web 2 first tier links high domain authority wikis domain authority above 20 first tier links anything below that second tier link social bookmarking those that allow content uh, even if it's not permanent those that allow content of above two or three hundred words first tier links those that don't allow too much content second tier links authority links same same applies those that allow surrounding content so you can add context to your links first tier those that don't allow so much or don't allow any content are lower tier links forum profiles are second tier links URL shorteners are best used as indexing links edu uh, the same as the social bookmarking and authority those that allow com those sorry those that have a domain authority of above about 20 or 30 consider first tier links those that have a domain authority below that level are lower second or third tier links I tend not to use third tier links much at all URL shortener is the only one what I tend to use here is indexing I tend to use the indexing tool or an indexing service when I get to here now whichever you can create any number of different looking um, diagrams using these basic rules using some or all of these rules this is just a hodgepodge you can have these pointing to those and not have these here and only have forum profiles there and uh, you can have your money site can actually have more than one URL on it you can have several URLs and whatever so you, you can mix and match these what I've given you here isn't a, uh, a graph for you to use a, a, a diagram for you to use it's some basic rules for how to make your own good diagram and then fiddle with it to make it as unique as you can and of course feel free to break any of the rules any of my rules that you want to um, because you know they're not hard and fast and SEO as we all know and link building is always changing so I hope you find some value in that and it just clears up for some of you guys who might not have been in the SEO and link building business for too long exactly how it all works as you can see that simple um, diagram here and it is relatively simple uh, is going to create well over a thousand links it's probably way too big to be honest with you um, how many first tier links is it going to create yeah it's going to create 540 first tier links even if I take those out half that it's way too many links that's going to create um, for a new site particularly in a local niche you want to keep that down to maybe 100 at the most so you really want to trim that down so don't be a, don't be scared to pick and mix which sites make it into your task and if you've, if you've got a task already running you can right click on any of the task details on there and stop that that element of the task from running that's fine so there's you know you don't have to create all the links from all the groups in every task you know be selective be an asset to the collective what am I doing Scritty SEO autopilot discount signing off